Good day everyone and welcome back to my virtual classroom. For our Science Discoveries episode for today, we will be learning stoichiometry and this is part two. So let's get started. everyone our topic for today is part two of stoichiometry when we talk about stoichiometry this is dimensional analysis or the math conversions that starts with one substance and ends with a different substance it uses coefficients from a balanced equation to create your mole ratio so we have our mole ratio which is used with dimensional analysis to determine the amounts of starting and ending substances. Mole ratio can be used as a conversion factor in stoichiometry because chemical reactions follow the law of conservation of mass. Mass is not lost between the reactants and the product. So all stoichiometry problems involving 1. Balancing equation, then you have your mole ratio, and then your dimensional analysis. So let's take, for example, the process wherein you have 2H2 plus O2 will yield 2H2O. Now, this is a balanced equation. Let's say we wanted to determine how many moles of our water, how many moles of this, can be produced if we have 8 moles of our hydrogen gas. So if you would notice, in our process here in our graphical representation a here represents the substance given for this example it will be the hydrogen gas and b here represents the substance that you are solving for this example it is the water or h2o so how do we use this graphical or mole ratio to solve for the moles of h2o so after balancing our equation now we use our more mole ratio. So here we would notice that there are two of your H2. So that will be two moles of your H2O over two moles of your H2. Now in a dimensional analysis, since this is the mole ratio, all we need to do dimensional analysis will be the eight moles of your H2, which is the given, you just need to multiply it with a mole ratio. Don't forget that the same substance must be on opposite position for you to be able to cancel it out. So 2 moles of H2 and then 2 moles of H2O on top so that you would be able to cancel your H2 and H2, which will give you 8 moles of H2O. Let's try more examples. Here, you have how many moles of magnesium chloride can be produced from 5 moles of hydrochloric acid. So the first thing that you have to do is with your equations, you have to, to balance it. Now for this case, our equation is already balanced. So you have Mg plus 2HCl will yield MgCl2 plus H2. So the given is 5 moles of our hydrochloric acid. And you are asked how many moles with MgCl2. So the first thing with our dimensional analysis will be you write your given 5 moles of your HCl multiply it with a mole ratio don't forget since the the given is hcl we will place hcl as our denominator and we will place our mgcl2 as our numerator which is what is being asked then you look at the equation what is the mole ratio of hcl against mgcl2 so that means in our equation there's actually two moles of hcl and one mole of MgCl2. We cancel HCl, so that's 5 times 1 divided by 2 will be 2.5 moles of MgCl2. That means that 
if you have 5 moles of hydrochloric acid, you will produce 2.5 moles of MgCl2. Let's take a look for another example. How many moles of barium nitrite can make 4.5 moles of ammonia by reacting with water? So again, the given is 4.5 moles of your ammonia and you are asked for how many moles of barium nitride required so that you will produce 4.5 moles. So again, for our computation or calculation, we write the given, which is 4.5 moles of ammonia, NH3, times the mole ratio between ammonia and barium nitride. So that means that ammonia will be in the denominator and our barium nitride will be in the numerator. So that's two moles of our ammonia is to one mole of our barium nitride. So 4.5 times 1 divided by 2, the answer will be 2.3 moles of barium nitride. Let's take this as our last example for mole ratio. How many moles of sodium hydroxide can make 7.32 moles of hydrogen gas? Again, your equation must be balanced. And then you would look at the question. The given is 7.32 of your hydrogen gas. So this is 7.32 moles of our hydrogen gas and you are asked how many moles of sodium hydroxide is required. So the first thing that you have to do is write your given 7.32 moles of hydrogen gas times the given will be the denominator and what is being asked which is sodium hydroxide will be our numerator. Look at the ratio. 3 moles of H2 is to 6 moles of NaOH. 7.32 times 6 divided by 3 will give us 14.6 moles of NaOH. Now let's look into what if we are given the mass value. Stoichiometry is the use of dimensional analysis to calculate relationships between the amounts of reactants and products in chemical reaction. It uses the coefficients from balanced equation as another fraction in the dimensional analysis. So here you have your steps on how to solve your mass. So the first given is your mass of your A and then you convert this mass of A into a mole because all we know is that there is a mole ratio between your reactant and your product or any of your reactants will have balanced mole ratio. So you convert your mass to moles of your A using its molar mass. And then you use your mole ratio so that you will know the mole of your B which is the unknown and then multiply it with the molar mass of B so that you will get the mass of your unknown or the mass of B. Let's take this as an example. How many grams of magnesium metal would be needed to react completely with 34.7 grams of sodium fluoride? So here, Sodium fluoride is our given, which is 34.7 grams, our NAF. You are asked for the magnesium metal, which is our Mg. So the first step in our analysis will be, you write down the given 34.7 grams of NAF. Convert this to moles of NAF. How will we convert this to moles of NAF? by using its molar mass. The molar mass can be found in the periodic table. So you have Na, which is 22.99 grams per mole, and fluorine, which is 
grams per mole. Adding this, you will have 41.99 grams per mole. So you will have here 41.99 grams of NAF is per mole or one mole of your NAF. Therefore, you will get your mole ratio for this. Once you get the mole, sorry, not the mole ratio, you will get the mole equivalent of NAF. Once you get the mole, you will multiply this. I'll just write it here. Multiply the whole thing by the mole ratio, which is one mole of mg. Don't forget, the given is always in the denominator for your mole ratio. And then, since we will get one mole of your mg here, we will multiply this with a molar mass of mg, which is 24.301 one gram of mg per mole of mg hence we have naf cancelled naf mole cancel mg mole cancel out so we have 34.7 divided by 41.99 divided by 2 times 24.301 you will get 10.0 grams of mg let's take another example if 35.5 grams of calcium oxide so you have calcium oxide this is 35.5 grams how many grams of calcium hydroxide can be formed so that means you're asked for this in grams don't forget that we need the molar mass and the mole ratio to be able to solve this so we start with the grams i think i'll have to write it here 3.5 35 sorry 35.5 grams of calcium oxide times the molar mass of calcium oxide so calcium let me write it here calcium is 40 grams per mole oxygen is 16 grams per mole okay uh, 40.08 so you will get 56 okay grams so you just need to write 56.08 grams of calcium oxide per mole times the molar ratio the mole ratio sorry not molar ratio the mole ratio the mole ratio of calcium and calcium hydroxide here calcium oxide and calcium hydroxide is one mole calcium oxide is to one mole of calcium hydroxide and then you have again multiply this with the molar mass of calcium hydroxide so that will be per mole of your calcium hydroxide and you will have 74.09 grams of calcium hydroxide again this one is from the periodic table this one is from the periodic table this one is from the equation itself so you just need to multiply all the numerator divided by the denominator you will get 46.9 grams of calcium hydroxide our last example how many grams of mercury 2 oxide need to decompose to produce 111.2 grams of oxygen gas so the given is oxygen gas you are asked for mercury oxide again we write 111.2 grams of oxygen gas multiply it by the molar mass of oxygen gas which is 32 grams of oxygen gas per mole and then multiply it with your molar or sorry mole ratio between oxygen and mercury oxide so since there's oxygen on top we put o2 below that's one mole and we put hgo on the numerator which is two moles after which we multiply this with the molar mass of hgo so HGO, you will have one mole 
of HGO is 216.6 grams of HGO2. HGO, sorry, not HGO2. HGO. Cancel oxygen, cancel moles of oxygen, cancel moles of HGO. You will have 1,505 grams of HGO, which is required so that it can decompose 111.2 grams of oxygen gas. Thank you and see you next time. I hope that you have learned something new today and if you're new to my class, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today. And as always, as Teacher Maria would say, please do live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day, and love one another as how our God loves us. See you next episode for our science discoveries. Bye!